Hey, it's Kat. I'm going to do a review for The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. In this review, there will be spoilers, so I'll let you know when I start. I just finished it, and it took me a week to read this. It is such a big-ass book. I can't believe how many pages. I mean, contemporaries don't usually have this much. So this is about Andy, who is the daughter of a congressman. She's so used to not having any serious relationships. She's careful on what she does, what she says, who she meets. Then when her plans for her summer falls through because of something her dad did, she finds herself at a loss of what to do. So she, she finds a, a job opening, she doesn't know what it is, and then it turns out it's for walking dogs. And it's so sweet, because I mean, I'm, I'm not really a dog person as such, I'm more of a cat person. But this one, I mean, it made me feel really like warm inside, because I used to have a dog, and it just sort of brought back memories of what it was like to have one. I thought this was really detailed, and the fact that either Morgan's got a dog herself, or she really did a lot of research, because it actually felt like I was there actually walking these dogs and it was just so sweet there's a lot of romance in this a lot of teenage angst i swear to god i was never that bad as a teenager um, but it's it it's really one of those stories that will really pull you in and you will not feel like yourself <laughs> afterwards because it's just so intense and adorable as well but what was so great about this unlike a lot of books especially contemporaries i feel like a lot of the scenes can be fillers and you know because unlike i don't know any other genre you know there's nothing really to you can't just make something up to push it along with contemporaries it has to kind of feel like it could really happen in real life you know like you can't just put oh something happened you'd be like but wait that's not realistic at all whereas in this one I really did feel, I felt like every scene was valid, nothing felt pointless. I'm going to rate this 5 stars, I haven't yet done that so, and I fully enjoy this. It took me a week to read it but I don't regret any of it. I kind of, I'm looking forward to seeing what Morgan has to write next because this one probably is in my top two favourites. My actual favourite is Amy and Roger's Epic Detour. I think it's a lot of people's favourites, but yeah, I really like this one. And now I'm going to go into spoilers, so if you haven't read it, I suggest you go away and then come back, because I don't want to ruin your experience. First off, okay, how cute was Clark? Oh my god. <laughs> he was so adorable. I wasn't sure about him at first. I think because he was so quiet and so awkward. The funniest part was when Clark picks up Andy and for the date and her dad's there. And then she finds out all this stuff like he's the fantasy writer. And I don't know, as soon as they said what his real surname was, it clicked. Like, oh shit, this is ridiculous. I think there was a few moments though where I nearly cried but kind of inside I was really sad when Bertie got ill. Oh god that, that was the most, I was so scared I thought he was actually going to die and it was so sad. But I just love the, the way the interaction between Clark and Andy when they had to look after him and it was so awkward but so sweet because they were tired and they were just, they weren't even caring what they were saying anymore. And when she gets home and her dad's like oh where have you been he was so obnoxious i was like you can't go that many years without caring and then act like oh i'm your father you know you have to listen to me I'm like no dude get lost and she gets grounded like she had a legit reason why she was out i don't know why he didn't just listen to her she'd been having a work emergency it wasn't like she planned a secret sleepover with clark but when they arrange another date and then Nandy forgets and she gets to walk him back to the car. I'm squealing like a fangirl because they kiss and I'm just like, yes, yes. They finally did it. There was this whole deal with, I mean, with Wyatt and Toby and it was really annoying me because it was, I guess, Toby had this whole feeling of like, you know, it's meant to be and, you know, fairy tale image of what love was. I guess maybe that's what teenagers are like, but it really just made me realise how much, how separate I ever was from real teenagers. Like, my teenage life was never average, it was never normal. I missed out on a lot of 
of things that normal teenagers had. So I guess I can't really relate to having a crush on anyone that much that it's like I forbid anyone else from dating him. But it was so obvious when they had the scavenger hunt and Brie and Wyatt. I mean, it was even obvious before that, to be honest. I had this feeling that maybe Wyatt actually did like Brie. Instead of lying about it, why didn't Brie just tell Toby how she felt? You know, say, look, I like Wyatt. Would you mind? Blah, blah, blah. Maybe Toby would have been a bit more receptive of that than going behind her back and lying about it. And and then Andy going up saying, oh, maybe it's best if we don't tell her now. Dude, that is never gonna work. Ne when has that ever worked? In the history of seeing someone's crush behind their friend's back, I mean, really, when has that ever worked? I was so fucking furious with them. Oh my god, you could have just made this so easy. You could always picture it happening, like a downward spiral. This is what's gonna happen. Like I knew that when Andy found out she was gonna tell Clark and then Clark was gonna tell Tom and then Tom was gonna tell Palmer and you're just like, why are you doing this to yourselves? Why can't you just tell your friend, if your best friends, tell them how you feel? It really did frustrate the hell out of me. Andy's behaviour over the whole situation of the summer ending and then her dad getting back into politics and then worrying about what was going to happen. I mean, oh, I literally closed the book and was like ready to throw it out the fucking window. I swear to God. Her behaviour was so... I guess, I want to say, like teenage angst I guess like oh well you know nobody really changes anyway rather than I can't have you know, like oh why and then she has a cheek to go back to Topher like oh yeah I'm gonna go back to my old ways I couldn't understand the point of Topher to be honest because he wasn't really in it much and when he was it was just like oh let's just kiss it's just the same with Wyatt, I felt like he was a non-event as well because then he nothing really came of it. This is pretty much in every contemporary where you get like the girl break up with the boyfriend over, you know, insecurities and, and feeling like, you know, oh, things are going to get ruined anyway so they go off to someone else and then they suddenly, they realise that they all, that they love the person that they broke up with so they must go and declare they love to them and I'm like, oh, not again. This happens every time. But I'm glad that her and her dad fixed everything in the end. It was, that was the worst. I think one of the worst parts was that she was getting, she was finally getting to to know her dad better and having time with him. And then he suddenly slips back into the politician mode. And then she starts withdrawing back in and feeling like, you know, maybe it was all like it wasn't real. Maybe it was all a dream. And then it's just... It kind of made me really frustrated and angry at her dad for not seeing what he was doing to her. I cried when she got the Mustang and she got the note from her mum and I was like, oh no. It's so sweet when a revelation happens and you've realised that you've made a mistake and you must go to the person. It's just like, <laughs> yay! And then everything starts coming together and it's, I don't know, I just felt like it was after all that hideous frustration I was feeling towards Andy finally she's making up for it by making up with Palmer and and going off to uh, help her dad and then going off to find Clark it's like in a movie you know where they finally like walk into the wedding or something and say I object or whatever you call it I kind of wish I could just forget how I felt about Andy three quarters of the way through though because she really did make me so freaking angry it wasn't good for my feels <laughs> in general it kind of tore me away really really sad though that Brie and Toby didn't make up in the end I mean that was one of the childish things ever when you're a teenager I guess you feel everything's a lot stronger than if you're older but I mean let's face it Brie should have been allowed to see Wyatt. It wasn't like Toby was dating him. It was just ridiculous how Toby behaved towards her, acting like Brie had, you know, cheated on her or something. I guess in a way she was acting like a little child because it's like you stole my toy. You know how dare you steal my toy? I hate you. Yeah, like mm. really. Toby was one of my favourites, and then she suddenly did a U-turn on her behaviour. I was like, nope. 
I'm done. If you're going to be like this, screw you. I preferred Palmer in the end. It, she was one that I wasn't too sure about. Cause, not because of anything sinister, but because I felt that she was a bit too serious. Like the, the mother of the group. And she turned out to be a decent person. And she got over the feud faster. And it's funny given that she had nothing to do with it. It was an interesting journey. And for over 500 pages i am so glad i read it you should definitely go read it because it's brilliant it's got its moments but overall i was so pleased with i didn't get bored at all and that's what amazed me because sometimes i do in contemporaries sometimes they bore me in little sections because it's like you know just get to the next part it made me instead it made me want to know what's happening next and not in a this is dragging kind of moment. If you've liked this video, please give a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'll hopefully be with you soon with another video. Bye!